Hey everyone, my name is Abhishek and today we are going to create this retro chrome text animation in After Effects. All this without using any third party plugin. So let's begin. Alright, so right now I'm in After Effects and this tutorial is inspired from Texture Labs. So he created the same effect in Photoshop. So I was wondering how I can do the same thing in After Effects. And after a lot of tries, I finally figured it out. So all the credit goes to him. Also, you will notice that we have a couple of footages over here. We have the flare and background. So all these are downloaded from Texture Labs. I will put a link in the description from where you can check out the tutorial and these download links as well. So now let's begin. So first, let's create a new composition. Let's call this main. Width and height will be 1920 by 1080 frame rate 30 FPS and duration you can go with whatever you want. Just click on OK. Now let's create another composition for our text. Let's call this text and rest of the things will remain same. Just click on OK. After that, we are ready to add our text. So let's go inside the text comp and I'm going to select the text tool. Just click wherever you want. And now you can type whatever you want. I'm going to type retro and you can see that I'm using this Norwester font. Again, it's completely up to you. You can pick whatever font you want. Let me just quickly align this to the center using the align panel. So you can get this by simply going to windows and from here you can enable it. Now let's select this and make sure that its anchor point is in the center. So in order to do that, just select the layer, hold down the control key or command key on Mac, then double click on this pan anchor tool. Now we can select this, press S and I'm going to scale this up quite a bit, something like this. Also, you will notice that the color of this text is gray. So in order to do that, just select the text, just click on the color and just make sure that highlights and shadows are zero and the brightness is set to 50%. Now this color is very important because it will help us in applying the different effects. So let's go back to the main comp and I'm going to quickly drag my text over here. So now we have our text and on this one we are going to apply a couple of effects or layer styles we can say. So let's select the layer, right click and let's go to the layer style. And the first one that I'm going to use is bevel and emboss. So just click on that. Right away you can see that we have this really nice bevel and let's go under the settings. And from here, we are going to play around with a couple of the parameters. So first we have the size. So instead of five, you can pick whatever you want. For this example, I'm going to set this to 15 or 10 maybe. So I think 10 is looking fine. After that, you can select the depth and so you can see that it's 100. So let's increase this all the way up to 1000 so that we have some really nice sharp edges. And over here, we can play around with a couple of other parameters. So we have the angle. So you can play around with this. And for this example, I want this to come from an angle. So I'm going to set this to 60. And under the highlight opacity, I'm going to set this to 20. And the shadow to 20 as well. So now you can see we have this sort of look. And there is one more thing that you can do. So in order to really enhance the edges, we can just change the technique from smooth to chisel hard. So now you can see we have these sharp edges, which is exactly what we want. So once you're done with this, we can just simply close this up. And now we are going to create a solid layer. So right click new and let's create a solid and just click on OK. And let's make this fit to comp size. Now on this one, we are going to apply gradient ramp. So just search for gradient and just drag it onto this. And first I'm going to change the color. So just click on swap colors so that it will change the black and white. Now I'm going to drag my text once again inside this comp and you can place it wherever you want. Now I'm going to change the track mode of this to this text so that the gradient is visible only throughout our text. So now you can change the track mode option by simply pick whipping this and just select the bottom layer. So I'm using the latest version of After Effects and in that the track mode option has changed and it has improved a lot. So now you can just simply select a single layer for the track mode and you can just apply it on a bunch of different layers. And from here you can control the track mat, luma mat, and you can have the inverted mode as well. So we are going to set this to track mat. Now I'm going to select this and let's change the blending mode. So let's change this from normal to overlay. After that, I'm going to select this, press T and let's change the opacity to 50% so that we have this even out of look. So now we are ready to add some colors to this. So in order to do that, we can right click and let's create a new adjustment layer. And on top of this, we are going to apply Colorama effect. 
so just search for colorama and let's drag it onto this and right away you can see that we are able to see some really nice colors and we can change this color by going under the output cycle and over here you can see we have bunch of different presets which you can use and you can just play around with the input phase and from here you can get different kind of looks but for this one we are going to create our own so in order to do that i'm going to just select the ramp gray so that we have this black and white look and now if we can click on this triangle and we can just simply move them so i'm going to place this black one over here and let's move the white one and i'm going to place it right next to the black one something like this just like that now you can play around with the phase shift and you can just move the colors to up or down however you want so for this example i'm going to make this somewhere over here and now we are ready to add different colors so let's just simply click and from here you can pick whatever color you want so first i'm going to add a really nice dark brown color something like this just click on ok now i can click once again and over here i'm ready to add some really nice yellow color so we can pick the color from here and after that you can change the tones something like this now it's completely up to you you can pick whatever colors you want and let's click over here and i'm going to change this to white just click on ok and let's click one over here as well and i'm going to make this blue and let's change it to darker blue something like this and let's click over here as well and i'm going to make this one a very light blue something like this now it's completely up to you you can pick whatever colors you want and you can have different kind of looks so you can play around with the colors and you can just move them here and there so now we are done with our colors and you can see that we have this sort of look and the best thing about this is that all this is driven by using this layer so if i turn this off you can see that it changes the complete look so that means we can tweak it more by simply going inside this layer and we can play around with the bevel and emboss but there is one more thing that you can do you can just select this layer right click layer styles and let's add some inner shadow and over here you can see we have this really nice highlight so we can play around with this so let's go under the inner shadow and from here we can play around with the distance so you can increase the distance however you want but for this one i'm going to set this to zero and we have this size so if i increase this you can see that we are able to get this really nice highlight on the edges so i'm going to just increase this little bit something like this so you can see that this is before and after so it makes a huge difference and in the same way we can go inside the bevel and we can play around with these different options and you will notice one thing that some of the edges are very harsh so we can fix that by simply going under the bevel emboss so you can see we have this option called soften and if i increase this you can see that we are able to get rid of all of these hard edges and also you can see we are able to get this really nice look so now if this is something that you want to go with it's completely up to you but for this example i'm going to just simply set this to something like three or four maybe just like this now let's go under the inner shadow and i'm going to tweak this further so you can play around with the opacity you can just simply set this to something like 50 so i think this is looking good so now we are pretty much done with the text and it's time to add some flares to this so in order to do that let me just quickly set this to 100 now we can select the flares and we can just drag it into the comp hide both of them and i'm going to enable this one so let's select the flare too and i'm going to change its mode to add after that you can select this press s to scale this down and i'm going to just scale this something like this and after that you can play it at different positions so first i'm going to place it over here just like this now we can select this press ctrl d to duplicate it and after that you can place it at bunch of different positions so here you can see we have these three really nice flares and we can probably scale them down something like this so also we can have this flare as well so if i enable this you can see that we have this really bright flare and i'm going to again set this to add now we can press s to scale this down and we can just place it at different positions so first i'm going to place it over here at this t 
and if you want to change its color then you can search for hue and saturation and let's drag it onto this flare after that you can just play around with the master hue and you can get uh, whatever color you want so i think this is looking fine now we can select this press ctrl d to duplicate it and we can place it at bunch of different positions so one i'm going to place it over here and now again press ctrl d and i'm going to place one over here as well something like this we can press s to scale this down and now we can add some animation to them so let me just quickly select all of them and let's press p for position and let's add a keyframe let's go to two seconds mark and we can probably zoom in and after that you can just simply select each of these and have a little bit of animation so i'm going to move this to the bottom and let's select this and i'm going to move this to the side for this one we can just move this little bit up and we can just select this and let's move this down in the same way we can move this down or up and we can select this one and let's move this down just like that so once we're done with this, we can also do some animation to the text as well. So in order to do that, you can select the text layer. And if you go under the bevel and emboss, you can see we have this option called angle. So we can play around with the look. So let's add a keyframe and let's go to the two second mark. And after that, you can just simply make a little bit of adjustments. So now we are done with our animation and we can do one more thing. We can select all of them and we can right click and we can pre-compose them. Let's call this animation. Just click on OK. Now we can add our background as well. So let's drag the background just like this. Now you will notice that we are able to see some black borders. So we can fix that by simply changing the mode to screen like this so once you are done with this we can play around with the background and i'm going to apply curves to this let's drag it over here and let's lower down its brightness also we can play around with the colors and i'm going to make this so something like this so this is the before and after so once you're happy with this we are ready to add some glow so in order to do that right click new adjustment layer and let's search for glow and let's drag it on to this let's increase the glow radius to something like this and let's decrease the glow intensity so we can set this to something like 0.2 or 3 whatever you want so there you can see we have this really nice glow and there is one more thing that you can do you can also add the flare to this and we can change its mode to add after that we can place it at the edge something like this let's scale this up just like that let's apply hue to this as well to match the colors just change the master hue something like this now we can select this press t for opacity you can hold on the alt key and you can type this expression wiggle 5 comma 100 now you can see that this will keep on blinking something like this and we have all the animations going on inside our text and at last we can add some greens to this so for that again let's create a new adjustment layer and on top of this let's search for green and you can see that it will add really nice green so we are going to change this from to final output so now you can see we have this really nice greeny texture on top of it you can play around with it using the intensity or the size itself but for this one i'm going to leave them to the default so we are pretty much done with the final look you can also select this and let's add some scaling animation to the text as well something like this so there you go in this way you can create your retro text and the best thing about this is that you can change this by simply going inside your text form and you can type whatever you want and if you go back you can see that all the text have been updated all you have to do is just play around with the position of these flares and everything will be fine 
So this is how you can create these kind of retro looking text animation and the project files for this tutorial is available on Patreon. So if you are supporting me over there, then you can download it from there. And if you are not, then you might consider it because you will get access to the tutorial project files and exclusive templates that are available only on Patreon. So with that being said, my name is Abhishek and I'll see you in the next one.